good evening students this is pail ma'am here and today we are going to discuss the first chapter of your evs book which is our environment so first thing which comes in the topic are the biotic and the abiotic components because our environment comprises of both the components which are biotic as well as abiotic okay so the biotic components comprises of all the living creatures okay it can be the plants the animals okay all the microorganisms birds insects everything are categorized under the so today we will primarily focus on the biotic components of our environment okay so the biotic components may be of different types like i said they have they have been primarily categorized under three main categories which is given in your book which are the plants the animals and the microorganisms okay now the plants they are also called as the producers now why they are called the producers because they can produce their own food we all know this right so as i was telling you that during photosynthesis hmm what is happening is the water is being absorbed by the roots that we all know right the roots absorb the water and minerals from the soil so they move up okay towards the different parts of the plant and they reach up to even the leaves and leaves we here i have tried to magnify a single leaf to show that what is happening during photosynthesis so whatever water is reaching up to the leaves they are being used up in the process of photosynthesis along with the carbon dioxide so we know that carbon dioxide is already present in the atmosphere so that is being used up along with water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll okay so chlorophyll pigments are the ones which are capable of absorbing the sunlight from the sun okay they absorb the energy in the form of photons what in the form of photons right so these photons uh, uh, help in the formation of glucose okay the photons are being absorbed by the chloroplast or the chlorophyll and in the in the using the raw materials carbon dioxide and water glucose is being formed and oxygen is being released out okay out. so the okay so the reaction can be written in this way that the raw materials being used are carbon dioxide and water so carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll produces glucose which is the food of the plant which is used by the plants okay for various activities like for growth for reproduction and all so this glucose is produced along with the liberation of oxygen okay that's why we say that during the day the plants they take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen now you understood what reaction is being involved in this process okay so why we are writing this in the top of the arrow is to show that these are not taking part directly in this reaction but these are helping in the process of photosynthesis so we can assume these carbon dioxide and water to be the reactants okay these reactants are put in a vessel let us assume this vessel to be the chlorophyll and the heat to be the sunlight okay so without this vessel and without the heat the reactants cannot be converted into products right so that's why they are not directly taking part in the reaction but they are helping in the reaction okay that's why we are writing it down in the on the top and below this arrow okay so the reactants here will be carbon dioxide and water and the products formed using sunlight and chlorophyll chlorophyll let us assume this to be the vessel okay in which the reactants are reacting to form the products now products here are what glucose and oxygen so this glucose which is produced in the leaves will be now 
ट्रांसपोर्टेड टू डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द प्लांट ओके ट्रांसपोर्टेड टू डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द प्लांट एंड यूटिलाइज फॉर वेरियस पर्पसेस लाइक फॉर द ग्रोथ ऑफ द प्लांट फॉर रिप्रोडक्शन रिप्रोडक्शन मीन्स वेन फ्लावर्स आर कन्वर्टेड इन टू फ्रूट्स ओके फॉर वेरियस पर्पसेस दिस ग्लूकोज इज बींग यूज बाय द प्लांट्स ओके सो द मेन रीजन द मेन प्रोसेस okay that we should focus now is photosynthesis where carbon dioxide and water are helping in the formation of glucose and oxygen so since plants can produce their own food they are called the producers or they are also called as autotrophs now this is a new term for you autotrophs auto means self and troph wherever the word comes troph it is it means food okay so trough trophic level you have also studied you have come across this term in food chain okay the various trophic levels so wherever the word trough comes it signifies food in biology okay so autotrophs so this is the new term it can be asked even in match the following in true or false or anything okay so autotrophs are the other name of the plants now next we will move on with the animals now animals they consume the plants okay now some are flesh eating okay now we are stuck in the lockdown okay so whether you are eating chicken or eggs or not but you are surely eating rice dal and vegetables right now where do we obtain that rice dal and vegetables from it's from the plants right so that's why the producers are producing the food which we are eating okay so that's why we the animals are also called as consumers okay because we are consuming the food produced by the producers right and in other words we are also called as heterotrophs now auto means producing by own but hetero means which are dependent on the others now others here signifies the producers so we are dependent on the producers for our food that's why we are called as heterotrophs what we are called as heterotrophs so the other names of consumers or animals are the heterotrophs now this term is also very important for you to remember okay now the consumers may be categorized further into primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary quaternary and so on in your book only up to secondary consumers are given okay so we will now study only up to secondary consumers so primary consumers are mostly the herbivores which are directly dependent on the plants for their food you know you know all the herbivores right you must be knowing about the deer the cows okay elephants they are dependent on the plants for their food without plants they cannot procure or they cannot get their food so they are called as the primary consumers primary why they are called as primary consumer because they are the first one to be dependent directly on the producers or the plants okay now the primary consumers or the herbivores they are eaten up by the carnivores now carnivores they are indirectly dependent on the producers okay all the carnivorous animals like the lion tiger and all they are all referred to as secondary consumers what they are called as secondary consumers because they are dependent on the primary consumers for their food okay so next we will move on with the microorganisms so the other name of the microorganisms are decomposers now what is the meaning of decomposers which decomposes our bodies okay now our body is composed or our body is formed but what the bacteria and the fungi they are doing okay what the microorganisms are doing they are breaking down the uh, the physical component of our body okay they are breaking down the body or they are decomposing it is the opposite of compose or formation okay they are breaking down hence they are called as decomposers okay so the microorganisms you already know the examples of microorganisms they are the bacteria fungi okay all these are categorized under the microorganisms so today we will study only up to this in our next class or in our next video i'll talk about the abiotic
components of our environment.